Welcome to Hope Christian Leadership University and Seminary. We're on the course Divine School of Healing. This will be session number three, Healing and Impartation with Randy Clark, part one. We'll do part two in the morning. A university training up today's generation for church leadership tomorrow. Boy, we can certainly use that, huh? Yes. A university that gives you a career along with your degree if one is willing to participate in our internship program. Training leadership to change the world. Uh, while we're on this page, please note that we've teamed up with Hope Retreat Global Ministries and we're providing college courses all summer through September for free or extremely discounted tuition. Uh, ACL University is already one of the least expensive uh, Bible colleges and seminaries to go to in the country, so you definitely don't want to miss this. Uh, every weekend, just go to our website, there it is, hoperetreattheranch.org. Uh, university phone is 757-636-8163. I am Professor Dr. Randall Maxwell, and we are definitely a move of the Holy Spirit of the Living God. Need a poster done? Michael can do it for nothing. <laughs> you need a good looking guy, I'm right here. Not for nothing. Not for nothing. Oh, not for nothing. No. He's going to help us bring money into the yeah. ministry. Yeah, you need black water. And he's yeah. doing that for the ministry. Yes, sir. Cool. Okay. Well, welcome to class. Uh, I'm glad you guys could join us on this short video. You need to hook up for our little our live streaming video platform so you can participate in the whole session and maybe even receive some healing in your own life or perhaps your family's life or maybe a friend's life. We're living in a broken, hurting world that definitely needs... Some <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to jump right in. Uh, I think we're going to start with a little praise and worship and then we're going to go in and hear... Randy Clark. Uh, so, let's jump right on it. Well, listen, we're thrilled you're here. This event is very special to us for a whole bunch of reasons. When I introduce uh, Randy Clark in a little while, you hear some of why. But the Lord has, has given such a, a breakthrough uh, for us as a church family because of these kinds of events. And some of the most extraordinary miracles uh, we've shared together in this place, in this room, over the years. And we're just believing that God's going to do it again. Yes, He will. And then you add on top of that, for the last four weeks at, at Bethel, we've been having a visitation unlike anything we've had for probably 20 years. And uh, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm just expecting something to happen that's really deep. And profound for all of us. So, all right, we got a great worship team that's going to help us. They're going to lead us. Let's, you know what? Let's start the first night the way we like to end the last night. Let's start at the top. Let's just give him our best. Let's just honor him with our praise, celebrate his goodness. Amen. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, I'm going to ask you to do one thing, though. There's somebody close to you you don't know, and you need to bless them. Do that, and we'll get started. Bless you, guys. Bless you, man. Bless you, Becca. Bless you, Becca. Bless you, Becca. Bless all our viewing audience. Oh, you cyber people. Bless you.
links to our live streaming video platform. Seriously, you don't want to miss a minute of being
stuff. We're gonna jump right into the school now. Ready, class? Ready! Ready. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you would help us by sending your Holy Spirit in great power and releasing gifts to bring glory to his name. And we thank you for what you're going to do in advance. Thank you for all the healings that's going to take place. Thank you, Father. And we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, tonight I want to speak to you on the subject of the ways of God pertaining to healing. It's uh, just very briefly, I'm going to just enumerate eight different ways that God heals. Some of those we will see him do tonight. Actually, quite a few of them. Uh, uh, the first one is God heals through declarations. Unlike the New Age movement that says that you can, by your confession, create your reality, I don't mean that. I mean first you hear from God. The will of God for that moment. Then you declare what he's told you to say. That declaration releases power to bring into effect what you have declared. It also is important to understand that you may believe God is doing something. If you don't declare it, it doesn't have an effect upon the people who are listening to you. I was on my way to a traditional Baptist church in Brazil. And by the way, the point right now we're seeing the, the voice of the apostles of Brazil is going to be held in the largest traditional Baptist church. Average attends 18,000. Since they opened up four years ago, every year that we've gone, we've probably ministered three or four of the largest Baptist churches in their country. It's been amazing. So I was going on my way to this Baptist church and the Lord reminded me of this passage and I looked it up and it was like when I read it, it was 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13. As it is written, we believe, therefore we have spoken. And in that same <coughs> spirit of faith, we do believe and therefore we speak. Mm. Like the Holy Spirit said, if you believe I'm going to do something, but you don't say it. You do not bring the people into your level of expectation. But by declaring what you believe I'm going to do, it shifts the atmosphere. And I began to try that, to begin to say what I thought God was going to do, something I'd never done before. And I saw a huge change in what we saw happen and in the atmosphere of faith. So, sometime after that, and having watched God be faithful, um, I carted. It happened here in this church first time I came, we were seeing 3% of the numbers of healings to the number of people's 3% ratio. And I don't have time to go into it, nor do I have the voice to do it. But the Lord told me to ask for more according to the measure of faith that I had. We already had probably 7% ratio of healings to people there already. Normally, it's 3%. So we're already doing great. The Lord says, you're limiting me because you've been blaming me for the lack you're seeing. You're seeing. You've been blaming me and you've been blaming my sovereignty. And I want to prove to you that I want to do more because normally at this point in the service, you'd have 15 people healed. My word of knowledge. And then it'd be 15 more because it's about 50-50 at the end of the service after the laying on of hands. But we weren't at 15. We were 25. It's already more. And the Lord's going, my heart. Don't blame me. What's really been limiting is what you've been expecting. You've been expecting 3%. And you've been settling for 3%. And you've been happy for 3%. Ask me for more. You remember this, Bill? 
I remember it too. It changed my life. So I told the crowd what I just told you. And we asked for 25. Normally it would have been, that'd be half and be 25 more again. We asked for 25. We got 57. We asked for 75. We prayed and counted at 75 total. And we asked for 100, which is over three times what we normally have at the end of the meeting. And we usually see as many people get healed at the end of the meeting through laying on of hands as dead through words of knowledge. We asked for 100, and we had 137. And there had been no laying on of hands yet. I never, from that night, I never saw the percentage go down to 3% again. And for years, it stayed 10%. Until about a year ago, maybe 18 months ago. And now, almost everywhere we go, around the world, it's 20%. God expects us to grow in our faith and in our understanding of the way. So I want to make a declaration. I think there's around 1,700, 1,750 people here right now is what somebody gave me an estimate. <clears throat> if that's true, 10% would be 175, but we're going to go ask for 20% and just say, I want to declare, I'm not going to ask, I'm going to declare that I believe with all my heart before tonight's over, if we have a so-so meeting, we'll have 375 healings. <laughs> If we have a really good meeting, we'll have a lot more than that. Not, and that's only from the people here, which means there'll be a lot more than that watching on the streaming. There'll be a lot of people get there healed that they won't be included. I'd love it if they'd give us a report, but I'm just talking about the ones in this meeting. And I want to, but I also want to say, that doesn't mean he's not going to heal you who are watching him on live stream. I just don't know how many of you are watching. So I can't tell how many healings to expect. Second way God heals a way is through worship. Bill was with me the first time I ever did this. The second time was in Brazil. The first time was Dominican Republic. I spent 45 minutes explaining words of knowledge, frame words of knowledge, and we had about 200 people get healed. But I didn't preach that night. Because it wasn't time. The next day, the Lord said, I want, here's a message. I want you to preach it. You can't skip the message. So I'm thinking, okay, but public transportation ends at a certain time. And once it ends, man, most of the crowd leaves. How am I going to to be able to go for healing and preach a message in two languages. I only knew one of them. And then have time to, to minister healing. And I remembered something the Lord had spoken to me many years before. On Sunday morning when our church was still meeting in the school. We had the most powerful worship service we had ever had. On Sunday, and on Monday, I woke up suddenly because I'm a slow waker-upper. And my, my eyes open before my brain turns on. And I woke up wide awake, so alert, and heard <coughs> an internal voice, one of the loudest I've ever heard, that said this. And it was totally novel to me. I'd never heard anybody say it or teach on it. I'm sure it, other people had this information already, but I didn't. And it was this. I want you to know that when my presence is in your midst, in worship, so is my power to heal. And it was saying, if you're not expecting me to heal during worship, healing won't occur. But if there's a an anointing, strong presence in worship. And I want to say that all worship leaders all over the world, you got an equal time split with the preacher. 
And we're not the only ones who get words of knowledge. So do you. My son-in-law is a worship leader at a large church, and I took him with me around the world. And I kept encouraging him, you need to give words of knowledge. But then I'd whisper in his ear, but after you've said he's God's going to heal during worship, you just can't do worship, do the next song, and not inspect. You don't get what you expect, you get what you inspect. Because the inspection means you have so much faith that's going to happen, you're willing to look wrong. Okay, what did Randy just tell us? You don't get what you expect, but what you inspect. Expect, but what you inspect. And that means what? Well, do you? Well, you, uh, I think he was talking during his worship service. You, you're singing songs, you're worshiping, and you're seeing what's going on. Uh, My right presence here. is there. The presence is in there. your worship. And see my it. power will be there in your healing. Yeah. So people might be getting healed during the worship service. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he shared with us uh, about his trip to Brazil. Mm -hmm. God declares healing. First, he must hear from God. Does God want to be and yes. bring him? Yep. Yes. Who does that bring glory to? Him. Him. Yeah. These are Baptist churches in Brazil. But he, uh, I told him, if you believe I am going to do something, you must first declare it and ask for more mm -hmm. according to to your faith. Yeah. Well, I think it's important to me. We've been talking something <coughs> about the vision of Hope Universal Life Church. I'll tell my viewing audience right here and now, I never intended to get into the church business. Unfortunately, I was shown that There's not a church within driving distance of here that even believes in the gifts of the Spirit, Holy Spirit of the living God. Or they certainly don't practice it. Wow, man. Uh, that uh, necessitated us planting our own church. Uh, so I am to declare to you the vision of Hope Retreat, Global Ministries and Hope Retreat, or Hope Universal Life Church. And we kind of talked about that. Five years from today, mark my words, there will be 10,000 members and, a, and 10 campuses. Wow. Amen. Uh, mark my word, viewing audience, 10,000 members, 10 campuses. A lot of grants to cut. <laughs> <laughs> and your property management. Okay, unfortunately, you're not going to get to sit in on uh, any more of the uh, uh, session uh, due to when we upload online or television, we're limited to the amount of time we can upload. I strongly encourage you, especially in the School of Healing, to get it on our live streaming video platform and join us for the whole session. You will get enormous amount, uh, amount of things from it. Agree? I agree. agree. Okay. okay. Two things I wanted to mention here right now, especially for you, my viewing audience on this videotape uh, in cyberspace or television. Again, I hate it for you that you're missing the whole thing. Just give us a call at the, at the university at 757-636-8163 uh, and get on our live streaming video platform. But what we were just talking about here in the lecture is healing coming to you who may be watching this even short video. 
What did he say about that? I like when he said, change the way you think. Hmm. Yeah, change the way you think about it. There's people been trying to get healed for hundreds and hundreds of times and yeah. been prayed over. Change the way of your thinking. Yeah. I mentioned Matthew 4, 17. <laughs> Matthew 4, 17. From that time on, Jesus began to preach. This is after he's baptized by John the Baptist. Yeah. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Part of your, perhaps you need to change your thinking, not realizing Jesus came to establish his kingdom when he was here on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. That's the spiritual realm we talk about quite frequently. It's the spiritual realm controls the physical realm we live in. Mm -hmm. But we can live out of the kingdom mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. Many people don't receive healing because they got stinking thinking. Mm -hmm. But if they truly believe it in the kingdom of God, that spiritual realm will come open and they will be healed. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Well, if you're viewing this video, you can receive a healing right now. Are you sick? Do you have coronavirus? Do you uh, have ailments in your joints and bones? Do you have a mental illness? Do you have an addiction? I'm claiming healing over you right now. By His stripes, you are healed, but you must believe that. Many do not receive healings due to a lack of knowledge. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I forget what was that scripture he mentioned. Oh, uh, it's in Exodus. Exodus. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I think it was. Let's see here. Uh, Exodus 33. Okay. I don't, it it says, "Show me your ways that I might know you." We don't ask God to show us His way so we can see healings and for people to think that we're some mysterious healer. As well, I give any healings that comes to me, give God the glory because it didn't. Got, it might have come through me, but yeah. it is God who provides the healing. In our recovery branch, when someone sits in here for their first interview on intake, I say, my job is to simply introduce you to a very real, a very intimate, eternal love relationship with the person of Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the one that's going to heal you. Once I've done that, my job's over. I'm just here. Now it's a sounding board. It's a sounding gong. I'm just here. Hey, no, he's not a gong. He's got lots of good aggravation. Sounding gong. Well, both of you guys have been here for a while. I'm now kind of y'all sounding board. And Michael, he gets out of line every now and then. And I have to get on him, but... I love him to death. But it's a sounding board falling gong. on top of his head. Gong. <laughs> gong. But claim healing tonight. Believe in healing tonight. Amen. And then tomorrow morning's class, You're join good. us on our live streaming video platform at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time in the morning. In the morning. Well, he referred us to 1 John 5, 14 through 15. And I want our viewing audience to read this. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. Mm. That if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, yeah. we know that we have what we ask of Him. What does that mean? Well, well, just ask if we have 
faith that he's going to ask answer all our prayers. We just ask for it. I think he already knows we're going to ask him before we ask him. So oh, I know, but yeah, but, he, but we still have to ask. We have to work on faith. I he already knows what's in No, I ain't, talk, I ain't talking about the, the whole the whole the predestiny thing. I'm just saying that from what the scripture says, he wants to make sure you believe in what. Yeah, you're asking. that's what I'm trying to say in reverse. Like, you know, he wants to make sure that I believe in it fully. Yeah, sure. as he wants you to believe in what you're asking. And where we've gotten off track, according to Randy, and I believe it with all my heart. He linked to the common normality in the church in America today. What causes so many non-healings? According to Randy, he says it's bad practices and bad teaching. It's back to we work heavily in addictions and mental illness here at the ranch, uh, at our recovery ranch. And I do not know why in the world most churches, even right here around the ranch, will send their broken people to the mental health industry for healing when they should have the answer themselves. <clears throat> bad practices and bad teaching. That's why I pride myself, ourselves, in our university is taking this generation and making leaders for the church of tomorrow. You've been here the longest, right? Yeah. And you've been here since right after Thanksgiving. Yes. Before Already, I promise you, you have better theology, better practice, yeah. better knowledge than the average pastor of all these churches around it. Yeah. Yeah, and you know what? It just hit me like I've heard you say it many times talking about the mental health industry. And you know, I don't know why it just all of a sudden hit me. Uh, why these churches don't heal them themselves. They don't believe in heaven. Why they would send them to some place that would give them medications that turn them into zombies. Hmm. When all the guys... Well, you want to know the answer to that? Money. The church is becoming... It's being conformed to the world oh, yeah. instead of transforming the world. It's all yes. about money. Right. The mental health industry actually pays them a finder's fee yeah. for everyone they send them. The mental health industry came up with this idea years ago. We need an office in every community. Yeah. That would be cost prohibitive. But there's a church already in every community. It's like pimping souls out. Let's teach them our way and they will choke on the bait. The bait is money. It's like Stalin's statement after World War II. We shall appeal to the capitalist nations to rebuild us. Which we did. And then we're going to start pushing all top types of moral destruction on them. It, that's what Stalin each pushed it on. What was it, Roosevelt? It was Teddy Roosevelt, wasn't it? Yeah, no, it was Franklin. Franklin. Yeah, Franklin D. Frank what? Franklin Roosevelt. Yeah, that's what I said, Roosevelt. No, you said Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah, well, they're cousins. Anyway, Franklin. They're in the same family. He said Roosevelt. That's what, he, yeah, I mean, he was acting like he was all, Stalin was all friendly and all that, when well, really he was ruthless and he was appealing to the uh, Catholics. Stalin was the head of the whole Communist Party. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they still have one goal, and that's to rule the world. Yeah, he was more ruthless than Hitler, probably. 
Well, let's look at history. Yeah. He said, we will destroy their moral fiber. That's when nudie magazines and yeah. drugs and all that shit entered our society. We shall destroy their moral fiber. We will defeat, we will then defeat their will to win. And we shall immediately grab them by the throat. It kind of makes you wonder if some of the politicians today are doing the same thing. Yeah. Well, they are. I mean, they are. Just, yeah. It's just like China. I mean, everybody's wanting to, you know, we went over there, tried to play China against Russia. Nixon went over there and did all this difficult ping pong diplomacy and such like that. And uh, gave him favorite nation stuff and trade with him. And it all him. boils down to the Illuminati. Oh, yeah. And when the Illuminati goes into power, what happens? New world order. What new world order? And the head of the new world order. It's got to go through the UN, surely. No, it's the same. Yeah, UN's well, just, I mean, I'm just UN just a pawn in the thing. Well, that's the whole United Nations. Yeah, well, they don't. They're, they're just a pawn. Like, yeah, they, they, they don't do anything. <laughs> you just sit there and have coffee and talk about the world. Yep. Uh, it all boils down. They need a Bible. The Antichrist will rule the one, one world order. Mm -hmm. uh, and either the rapture happens just before, which hopefully, yes, and then the years of tribulation. But if you can't be saved and believe before the Antichrist takes over, you're going to have a huge problem believing afterwards. Well, it's not going to be impossible, though, right? With God, nothing is impossible. Because there's going to be a lot of people who are not going to they're not going to take the part to the beast. I might all day. Well, I mean, during the tribulation period, if they're if we get raptured before the tribulation. Oh, yeah. Well, then they just be killed and yeah. and, and, and they're sinning at all, right? Well, some people, I think, <coughs> God's grace is still going to, you know, still be going to be people saved. I will saved. guarantee you this. If you win in 90% of the churches in America today with an assault team, you wipe out their security and get them all in the middle of the church and say, you either denounce Christ or I'm going to put a bullet right through your head. 90% of them will denounce any kind of faith in Christ. Your wife's head or your children's head. But there's good news. Here's the good news. God is stepping in. I believe he's revealed this to me. This is called Rima knowledge, which is revelation knowledge. We're at the beginning of what very realistically could be the last great world revival. It's in the making. Uh, but we have to build up leadership that knows the ways of God, that knows God intimately, that believe in healing, that believe in prophecy, that teach it. The average church in America today don't even believe in the gifts of the Spirit. They're even mainline denominations taking out of the scripture whole books. Well, maybe God didn't create the world like it says in Genesis. Yeah. Maybe he did create it like evolution. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as Rick Warren says, big thing, big, the big uh, bang. bang theory. I, I, I can go along with that. God said, let there be light. Bang! Bang! There was light. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was God Almighty, your Creator. So, what is the most
most meaningful thing you got out of tonight's lecture? Mm, that's good. Yeah, well, it's, uh... I already know I'm going to have to look. Well, go ahead and share that. I like to change the way you think because that really hit me. That you you got to stop having this thinking that you can't actually be healed or heal somebody and reaching inside the kingdom of God and pulling that out and pulling that inside you. And if you change that way of thinking, it's I've been telling you since you've been here, you've got to change your thinking thinking. Yeah. 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 I'm sure you heard that the first week you were here. Well, I ain't stopped. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I thought uh, communion was that, is mentioned on communion, you know, you're taking that, never realized. We that. take uh, communion much too lightly, don't we? Yeah. 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 We should take at least, what, the first Sunday every month? Yeah. yeah. In fact, I made a note to check with Universal Life Churches and uh, get some communion elements. Uh, there's healing through taking communion. It is the blood and body of Christ. Now the Catholics really believe that. Yeah. Well, they're getting. I mean, there's a lot of Baptists do it too. Yeah, it was first Sunday. Yeah. 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 But I mean, even the first century church, first century church did it every every time they met. The what? The first church did yes. it every time they met. Yes. Because then they got into trouble. The Corinthians got a little bit problems with it because they would get drunk on the wine and. Right. And overeat. Well, he said that one guy died in 1948. What was it? He took communion every day. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, wish you were here. Hope you join us on our live streaming video platform in the morning. In the morning. So you can experience healing. You can experience healing right now if you claim it. Amen. Don't ever forget that. Yeah. Because you have been prophesied over, uh, were there any uh, special oh. prophetic words given over certain people tonight? First of all, you got to believe in miracles. No, I'm, I'm, uh, I got a, over that healing service there. I was having my shoulder. I fell on about three or four or five years ago. I slipped on some ice and I ran it on the shoulder here. Feel better? It's been kind of really like I broke a whole bunch of things. The doctor said it was all right. And it's always been bothering me. It still bothers me a little bit, but I've been praying about it. And it seems like I'm better than that. Yeah. After I get in hell, praying about it. I wasn't raising my hand. Was just what do we think now. about the. Uh, when That's they a, first started doing healings, uh, first of all, the, the beginning of the session. <coughs> He claimed 375 yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the... Uh, and that was out of about, what, 1,400 right. people. Yeah. He's claiming now 20%. Yeah, 20%. He yeah, he really got, I guess he got chastised by God about and it. And after the the, uh, uh, the worship, there were 64 healings. Yeah. And after... Through his word, there were 11 healings. And we're just on part one of those things. Up. I'd say it'd be a lot by the time the end of This is a great study to get a part of if you or someone you know closely needs a healing of some type. I know there's hurting people in the world watching this videotape. Uh, don't listen to Satan. It's speaking in your ears right now saying, oh, that's a bunch of shit. You don't believe that. Believe it! Yes. It's your turn. <laughs> Would you stand? What? I believe in miracles. I believe in, I believe in healing. I believe in, I believe in him. Believe in I believe in you. Believe in you. I believe it's going to happen. It's going to happen. As you sing. Thank you, the dude. moment you're 80 percent, start waving your hands. I'm already 80 percent. I'm already 80 percent. Just.
keep waving. Stand. Remain standing. Remain standing. Goes. Good, good. Keep waving. I'm going to pray something. I feel like the Lord's saying a prayer. Pray. And I want you to know. And I think there's a guy here who's with me. Were you in the when we had the 9,000 out of 10,000 get healed? After eight nights, seeing 10 to 20, maybe up to 40% get healed every night. One night, the last night, if there's any mistakes, any confusion, should have been the first night, not the last night. A friend came and said, Randy, you have healing angels just came in the room. Hundreds of them just came in on your right. I gave Noah focus. Didn't say anything about any angels. Just said, on my right, there's a whole lot of healing about to break out. Yes. And I felt like the Lord asked me to pray something. I've never prayed this in a meeting like this since that time. It's a real short prayer. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, open the heaven. And send the 18-inch whirlwinds of fire into this place again. And touch the sick. And release healings. Come. Flames of fire. Come. Winds of God. Come with healing. Now let's sing it again. Remain seated unless you're standing or the moment you're at least 80%, stand up and start waving and join those that already are. Stand up and wave both hands over your head. We're going to take 30 seconds to let you check things out. 